Kickoff. You know, when I review a game that's just kind of average or boring or forgettable, I at least try to do something fun with the video. You know, like like something creative. Because if the game's boring, well, well, that's enough boring. You know what I mean? But look, I'm sorry, guys. This game was too boring. It was so boring, it literally gave my creativity one of those yellow cards. And to be completely honest, I'm not even sure what those do. Hide your imaginations from World Trophy Soccer! So I feel like I should probably point out that boring is not the same thing as terrible. This game isn't terrible. In fact, it's, it's not even bad, like at all. I mean, sure, it has a few annoying things, a couple little quirks, but all in all, this is a perfectly decent game of realistic 16-bit soccer. It's also, however, a perfectly boring game of realistic 16-bit soccer. If this game were any drier, it would cause a drought. Crops would die, people would starve. And I don't care how realistic the soccer is, or how yellow the cards are. That's something no one should wish for. Unless some of you are aliens who plan to take over the Earth. And even then, though, who wants a dry planet? Like Mars. No one wants to take over Mars. No one except us. But that's only because we know some of you are aliens who plan to take over the Earth. Look, I have to talk about something. Hey, speaking of Earth, it has continents. And, and continents, they have land that people have divided into countries. Look, I, I have to talk about something. And you can play as those countries in this game. You pick a continent, you pick a country. I'll be honest, I, I have no idea if the players for these countries are actually real people. I, I wouldn't know, I'm sorry. What I do know is that Finland is a real place. They have great metal bands there, that I know for sure. Anyway, from what I've read, this is actually just a game called Manchester United Europe. The developer made a few minor changes, they changed up the menus, and then they released it on the Genesis. Thus was born World Trophy Soccer. So if you've played that game and this looks familiar, that makes sense. They're apparently, basically, the exact same game. I mean, it's like it's like Before the Dawn and Wolfheart. Different band, same freaking guy. That's a Finnish metal joke. There's a ton of teams to choose from, like a literal metric ton, which is nice. And if you don't like what one of the teams is wearing, you can tweak that too. I wanted to put the US team in shirts that have the pattern of the American flag, but apparently that's not allowed. Thanks, Europe. I'm assuming you made this game, because if we did, that would be allowed. Anyway, from there, it's off to the pitch. You can do a single match or a tournament. And if that seems like kind of a kind of a boring choice, look, that's just the way this game rolls. Has no need for extraneous fluff. Like the word extraneous gives you two options. Deal with it. It's soccer. I mean, and besides, how many ways are there to play soccer without using explosives? Spoiler alert: there's two: single matches and tournaments. So pick one and shut up and have fun. At least if you're into soccer, because it's not a game like, say, Mario Strikers or freaking Mega Man Soccer. It's not a game that's going to appeal to non-soccer fans, is what I'm saying. It's a lot more simmy than arcadey, which means it's slow, you know, it's realistically paced, non-explosive, both in terms of its speed and its balls, which do not blow up. But the game plays all right, and it, it looks okay. It's a bit grainy, not very crisp, but I mean, my only real complaints were that the computer AI is sometimes insultingly bad. Like, he'll deke out your goalie, he'll have this wide open net that he's standing right in front of, and then not shoot. He'll just walk the ball back out, which... Actually, maybe that's not bad AI. Maybe that's great AI. Maybe it's AI so good that it's just fucking with me. Also, the game does this weird thing where, like, you automatically take control of the player closest to the ball. Like, it just switches on its own. Which means you'll be running around, trying to do something, trying to make something happen. And then all of a sudden, you swap players. So think about it, if, if you're running to the right, but then you take control of the guy who was already where you were going, and already on the right, well, now you're running in the wrong direction. It's like, it's like trying to write with disappearing, reappearing ink. Marvin Acme.
are definitely some clunky control decisions here. Things, decisions that I would not have made. Not the least of which is that you can substitute players on the field, but you do that by pressing A. And it doesn't pause anything or stop the gameplay. Things just keep happening around you. Hey, look, I don't know. Maybe that's a soccer thing. I have no idea how timeouts and substitutions work in real soccer. But what's crappy about this is that you lose control of your team. They just stand there. So basically, you learn quickly to never push A. But besides that, you know, all in all, I mean, look, it's all right, I guess. There's some clunky controls here and there. And the pace is so slow, I almost took a nap. But it's all right, I guess. And I suppose, if that's what you're looking for, just a realistic, no-nonsense game of 16-bit soccer. Well, World Trophy Soccer is certainly that. No nonsense. You're not gonna find any merry-go-round broke down here. You drunken reprobate. It's World Trophy Soccer for the Sega Genesis. Maybe you'd like a bowl of pretzels to go with it.